All right, let's talk about Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett, MVP candidate. Miles Garrett, yes, that is a discussion going on right now. And, you know, we can talk about the, you know, uh, debate of if an edge rusher could ever win MVP over a quarterback. But for now, let's just focus on what he did so well. And it started right out of the gate. First play that the Steelers would take from scrimmage, the Steelers offense would take from scrimmage, meaning the first play Miles Garrett is on the field for going up one-on-one -on -one against a left tackle. And there is a blitz on this side of the field as well. And that's one of the things I like what Jim Schwartz does with this defense is I feel like we we have seen in the past kind of teams say, hey, we got Miles Garrett. Let's just let him do his thing. And honestly, that's not a terrible strategy. But I always prefer when you have a star player still do work to make things easier for them. Because watch how when this play begins, you see that the tackle, he kind of, uh, for, for a second, looked like the blitz kind of, uh, maybe threw him off a little bit. Maybe he thought for a second he had to you know, block the blitzer. I don't know why you would do that. I mean, your job is to block Miles Garrett on that play. That takes your full attention. Uh, you know, for me, you know, you're supposed to block from the inside out. Miles Garrett's blitzing block Miles Garrett, but it was that little hesitation, and Miles Garrett moves so quickly, a lot of other players that you probably still would have had time to get back and make the block, but Garrett, his first step is so fast that he's already taking advantage. For the tackle here for Pittsburgh, you're not dead. You're not. You still have an opportunity here as all you have to do is push Miles Garrett towards the bottom of the screen, right? Just give Kenny Pickett an opportunity to, you know, not get hit by Miles Garrett, essentially. That's what you want to have happen. I'm not saying it's easy. Miles Garrett's really strong, but that's what you have to do here. As you see, to watch Garrett really run by, almost like he didn't get touched, uh, you know, and even some debate as to whether or not this should have been a safety. In fact, I don't even know if there is a lot of debate behind it. Like, let's go over to the sideline view to give a better angle as whether or not this should have been safety. It wasn't ruled a safety, and the Browns didn't challenge. However, you see, I'm going to pause this right now. This, I think, would be the most generous point that you could argue that this was a, uh, you know, stopping forward progress. This is probably most generous, and it still looks like the ball is over the goal line. Again, it's the same way as it is for a touchdown. Only one part of the ball has to be over the goal line. Looks like it is right here. I can't say definitively right here, but also this would be an incredibly quick uh, time to, you know, uh, call it forward progress. And I still, I, I think it is, the ball is over the goal line. I do think that's what's happening here. But hey, can't blame the refs when you don't challenge, right? Didn't throw the challenge flag, so to me, that's on Stefanski more so than on the refs. That's how I view it. But either way, incredible play from Miles Garrett. Could have legitimately put points on the board right there. Uh, they did force a punt quickly after, uh, which, you know, uh, so obviously not exact, quite as good, but still uh, got some value there. And honestly, going over here, one thing that I always look at with edge rushers is how do you look on your losses? I feel like the best edge rushers don't just look good when they're winning. They look good when they're losing, too. And this is an example. So once again, going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup against uh, a left tackle here. It's Dan Moore Jr. That's who he's going up against, who's not exactly a superstar, admittedly. So, you know, hey, again, if you have a tackle issue, well, if you're playing Miles Garrett, what should you do if you're the Browns? Put Miles Garrett on Dan Moore Jr., right? So that's, again, smart football there. We're watch what uh, Miles Garrett is going to do. Right off the bat, not doing anything too fancy. Runs basically right into uh, Moore Jr. He's just going to try and overpower him right here. Well, okay, let's see how that works. As you see, it works really well. He drives him very far back, and if that ball doesn't come out quickly, Miles Garrett is getting a sack on that play. It was only a matter of time, which is kind of the case with every uh, Miles Garrett play, right? It's only a matter of time. Uh, but, you know, here, Pickett did a good enough job of getting rid of the football quickly. But, again, you could argue, eh, going up against Dan Moore Jr., how much credit do we give you for doing that? Okay, you can make that argument if you want to. But how about something like this, where he's going to be doing something a little creative here? He's actually going to be going up. Uh, it's not really him, you know, who's the, using the creativity. It's the play call. He's going to move towards the inside. Going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against Isaac Samello, the good offensive lineman, good interior uh, offensive lineman for the uh, 
Pittsburgh Steelers. So it makes sense to, you know, for Pittsburgh to feel maybe not as concerned on this play as you feel on a typical Miles Garrett block. He's still Miles Garrett, but let's see what happens. Well, right off the bat, you see that, you know, again, Samello reads this well. Sometimes you get uh, confusion on these plays, but Pittsburgh, not getting too confused, actually reads this pretty well. So now it's just up to can Miles Garrett, who really can't use a move here, there's not enough space, kind of have to just use your power. Can he do that? Well, the answer is, of course, watch him drive Samello back. Samello eventually is able to hold off uh, Garrett. Good block. Again, like I said, these are his losses. These are Miles Garrett's losses, but they look so impressive. You can almost put these on, you know, uh, positive plays, even though he's getting stopped on these plays because of how impressive they look. And when those are your losses, well, okay, what are your wins then? I like this play a lot. This is, to me, a great example of what I want to see edge rushers do. I feel like way too often, edge rushers don't make things easy on themselves. They almost make things more difficult. The way this play works, once again, going to have a one-on-one -on -one block against Dan Moore Jr., but this time it's a little bit different because there is a tight end who's on that side of the field. He's not really going to be paying attention to Miles Garrett, but you don't know that if you're Miles Garrett, so you kind of got to go a little bit more around here. Watch, tight end runs the route, Garrett runs more towards the outside, because again, there was traffic there, but now he kind of looks around and says, okay, well, I'm here, right? Typically, you always have that dilemma of how far towards the outside do you want to go, because A, you could get pushed behind the quarterback, and B, it just takes longer to run more towards the outside, but you're already more towards the outside, so that time constraint isn't an issue, and while Dan Moore could try to push you behind the quarterback, you're Miles Garrett. As you see, Dan Moore is not really able to slow Miles Garrett down at all. Garrett gets the quarterback hit there. Again, credit to Kenny Pickett for getting the ball out. It was a first down, so, you know, good job by the Steelers there. But still, because, again, there is only so much you can do as a pass rusher if the ball is getting out quickly. But these are the types of plays that you do consistently enough. They do eventually turn into sacks. Going over here, kind of ironically enough, his other sack of the day. Yes, he had two sacks in this game. Uh, and yeah, these are all in one game, just to be clear. Uh, he, he does this every game, pretty much. Uh, this one, kind of ironically, wasn't quite the immediate pressure that last one was. Just kind of goes to show, you know, football's a team sport, right? And pass rush is a team sport. It's why, you know, looking at uh, sacks isn't always the best statistic to look at. Sometimes looking at stuff like pressures is the better stat. Or looking at, you know, PFF grades, things like that which Garrett has always been at the top of the league at, uh, that can sometimes, sometimes be the better uh, stat to indicate. Now he's at the top of the league at everything, but that's just because, you know, uh, that makes sense, right? Anyway, let's see how our guy Dan Moore Jr. is going to try to block Miles Garrett on this play. Well, right off the bat, he's actually doing an okay job, right? Garrett moved more towards the middle of the field, but look at Garrett's right hand. That's going to be the key thing here because we don't know about Garrett's strength, right? Garrett's such a strong player watch what he's gonna do with that right hand watch him drive more over gets around and then with Kenny Pickett kind of running into him is able to get the sack there was some help you know more pressure came from the other side and Pickett wasn't able to get rid of the football quickly but you know what over the course of a football game that is gonna happen as a pass rusher especially as a star pass rusher your job is when those things happen get sacks and that's what Garrett was able to do there so multiple sacks on the day you know for some people you look at that and say wow what a great day for Miles Garrett you say yeah uh, that's a Miles Garrett day right that's just what he's doing right now should he win MVP I mean uh, you know the kind of thing is I think the award is just not what people want the award to be. I think most people, and I kind of feel this way as well, I kind of wish we just had like a Johnny Unitas award and that went to the best quarterback every year and an MVP didn't take positional value into account. Uh, so that way, you know, we could have a year where Miles Garrett would, would, would win MVP. But as it stands right now, the award is called Most Valuable Player. And just the reality is your average defensive player of the year uh, you know, if you look at war is going to get you, I mean, I'll even be generous and say a win and a half above replacement, but that's pretty generous. Usually it's about a win above replacement. That's what you're looking at for the best every year, uh, for a mediocre starting quarterback, like take, uh, you know, Ryan Tannehill every year, it felt like, or like, I don't know, Baker Mayfield this year of like just like a fine starting quarterback, they usually have a wins above replacement of two. Like the quarterback position is just so much more important. And then the best quarterbacks, uh, you know, just an average top five quarterback season would get you around four wins above replacement. So 
there's just so much more value in quarterbacks than any other position that if the award is most valuable player, it's always going to go to a quarterback and it should always go to a quarterback. Now, again, should that be what the award is? I don't think so. Let's just make it MIP, most impressive player, uh, and then have the Johnny Unitas award. Seems pretty simple to me. But uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on all of that. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.